her today. God bless you so much. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Let's be seated. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Amen. Well, one of the things that we have to learn. Hallelujah. In um, walking with God, amen, and um, pastoring is to follow instructions of God. Hallelujah. Um, I've told you several times, it's not what you say that, as it were, <laughs> what, what blesses the people exactly, but exactly what the Lord is saying and what God wants to say. And um, in the light of this, well, Wednesdays, we'll be talking on prayers. So I'm starting a new series today. We'll continue on Sunday as we continue our praise teaching. But on Wednesdays, we will be talking about prayers. And we're not just going to be talking about prayers. We will be praying. I said we will be praying. And I have another good news for you. Starting from tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., we will be meeting together, we're praying together on Mixellar. Okay? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. All through this month, okay, if the Lord, you know, wants us to extend that, it's okay, we will do so. Praise God. So, but we will be, um, so tomorrow, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. on Mixellar, I will be leading prayers for one, for one hour, all right, and I will lead that throughout this month. Praise God, because I sense we are about to enter something. Praise God. Amen. I hope you know that touch light phones cannot do mixed at Ah, Amen, amen. I hope you know that phones with broken screen cannot see anything. Zazazu. <laughs> Praise God. Well, if there's a month to believe God for something, then it's this month. Yeah. When your mobile device becomes a prayer tool, then it, it has become a necessity. You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, praise God. So, um, so 6 a.m. to um, 7 a.m., right? We, 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 and make sure, you, you, don't, don't be like those people that come at 6 a.m. 59. <laughs> Just to receive the prophetic utterances for the day. Make sure you are there. The essence is, I want to help you, you know, you know, come into some things. And um, I don't sense it's just something I should teach, but something that I, sh I should help you in this season. All right? Um, like Pastor Tim is always saying, um, join yourself to the chariot of another person. All right? When a car um, runs out of battery, there is something called jump starting. So they take it and then they connect it to the battery of another car for that car to jump start and then so that it can run. And then sometimes people might have to push it, but whichever way, um, what I'm trying to do for you this month is to give you an opportunity um, um, to join your chariot to mine, all right? So 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. on Mixer Out Citizens of Light Church. That, that's the handle, right? The same um, mix at our page that we've been using for uh, marathon prayer and other prayers, okay? So, um, just join in, all right? I will be there live myself, uh, you know, as, as we pray together. And then, the good news is in the evening again, you have prayed with Pastor Tammy, all right? So, at, at least in the day, you are praying to um, house, okay? So, early in the morning, before the day starts, okay? And then at night, before you go to bed. Praise Jesus. Amen. Let's see Luke chapter 19. Let me start from there today. Luke chapter 19 and verse 41. Luke chapter 19 and verse 41. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 19 verse 41. Thank you, Mr. King. Luke um, 19 41. He says, and when he was come there, he beheld the city, and then he wept over it. Oh, praise God. Saying, 
if thou has known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. This is a very powerful scripture here. Go to the verse before again. It says, and when he, when he was come near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. Remember what I said to you in the course of rivers and wells. You remember, right? About the move of God. The move of God, like I said, you know, happens in our meetings. We need to pay attention to that. The move, there is a move of God over meetings. Okay? And we shouldn't despise that. Pastor Timmy taught us if, um, effectively on how to actually open up to the move of God in meetings, okay? And if, 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 if you haven't listened to that message um, again, please go after it and go and listen to it again. I feel strongly that there is something for you, you know, so that, I mean, like even in your home, you and your wife, you're praying. Um, one day, you know, myself and my, Pastor Timmy, you know, we're praying in the early days and, and, and all that. You know, Pastor Timmy told you that she can flow easily. I mean, Pastor Timmy is a flower. I'm telling you, easily, once the Holy Spirit touches a place, Pastor Timmy is, 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 so I remember then, you know, we were just praying together, Santo, just two of us, really, in our room, um, this young, young husband and young wife, we had believed God for money to buy curtains, finally, we have just one room with one curtain, with just one curtain, yeah, one, two, we went to Yaba to buy this expensive cotton with the cotton rod, and we brought it to Lori, and then and, and we're there. And then we started praying, Shanto Campbell, she tell her, oh, hey, bro, that's how Pastor Timmy started flowing. <laughs> so, glory. Pa, that's how she went, and she just brought down my cotton. Pra, I, sp <laughs> I stopped flowing instantly. I'm telling you. I said, please, don't spoil this cotton. Next time we want to flow, let's flow towards here. <laughs> She's always telling me that, see, are you anti flow? Uh, yeah, because I, I really, you know, and, 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 and I really need to celebrate her, you know. She, she, yeah, you know, yeah. She's so, and I'm, I'll tell you, yeah, she, she, she also even helped me to flow, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, you know how it is preceded when you go like, we are word people. I'm one of those people that will say, we, I come from a word background, word background. But listen to me. The kingdom of God is not standing on one leg. Yeah. So there is no such thing as we are word church. I'm a word Christian. There is no such thing. There cannot be such a thing as I'm a word Christian. There are folks who say we are spirit Christians. We are spirit. The kingdom of God is standing on two legs. The leg of the word and the leg of the spirit. So therefore, when we teach God's word, we must understand the dimensions of the flows of the spirit. It's necessary. It's vital. It's important. So I was talking to you that in our meetings, there is such a thing as the flows of the spirit. I taught you that during the, in the course of um, rivers and well. I don't want to go over that. Then I moved on to say that there's something called the flows of the spirit in or the move of God in the city. And you must understand that. There is a move of God in cities, in locations. I, I, I heard Brock Keith Moore, one of um, Kenneth Higgins' spiritual sons said, he said, listen, that there are certain places that for, that for reasons you cannot understand and you cannot argue with, God just created certain portals in those kind of environment. You know, whereby because for some reason it was, it's been, just been easy for God to be able to raise people in those kind of environment. Because maybe because of the yieldedness of the people, maybe because the people, for some reason. It's, it's, it's like churches. Some churches actually enjoy open heavens than some churches. This is what I mean. Listen, so, so that you don't get me wrong. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand. What, don't, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm saying that a church where they've been adequately taught on the flows of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit can move more in that place. The portals are open in that environment. Than in another environment where the people are so stiff, they are so rigid, and, and, and all that. I mean, I, I, I've had a number of people tell me after rivers and wells that they told themselves they would never fall. I mean, like the 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 you know a, a, a dear a dear woman was telling me you know and all that. She said, I told myself, Pastor, I've never fallen that this one not falling. And she said she was there and all that. I'm just or whatever. He said I felt some of my glasses. My glasses broke. She's even looking at me right now, you know. <laughs> that, he said, my glasses broke. Then I'm like, what happened? Listen to me. The power of God 
I think it was D.L. Moody or one of them. He said, the power of God is like electricity in motion. Sometimes when it touches you, you can't just help it. It just hits you like that. But there is also the move of God in cities. There's the move of God in cities. Yeah. In Nigeria, there has been places whereby for some reason, God has been, I mean, I've t- I, spoke, I spoke to you about Elisha. You know, I mean, the same place where Pa Elton was, Ayobaba Lola, you know, um, Redeem um, Overseer was around that area also at, the, at some point before he moved to Lagos and all that. You know, the same place, Bishop David Oedipo, he was in Elisha, he received the 19-hour vision and everything like that. You know, and several people. I told you about Ilori, the kind of people. I told you about, you know, Benin and then some part of, uh, is it Uyo? There has been places where it looked like if you look at the present generation of ministers, there was a forge. There was a place where God forged them. I mean, what I mean, not are uh, uh, the generation of the fathers. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? At some point, Babadeboe was in this city. Bishop Wedepo was in this city. B- Reverend Biodun Fato Yimbo, Reverend George Adeboe, Sam Adeyemi, Victor Adeyemi, all of them. It is not coincidence. If you, except you don't understand the things of the Spirit. It's what will make you think is a coincidence. And so let me now show you something so that you can understand what happens sometimes. That's why you will see this. Because whatever we say, there must be scriptural understanding and explanation. So it, just not just, it doesn't just become, you know, an ideology. So you see this now. He said, and when he was come near, he beheld the city. He did not behold the man. He did not behold the church. He beheld the city. I told you about God moves in churches. He moves in cities. He moves on individuals. He walked in. He was not an individual that he saw. He was not a church that he saw. He was a city. And he went, And when he came near, he beheld the city and wept over the city. Not over an individual. He wept over the city. Now look at this. Let's continue. Saying, if you have only known, if thou hast known, at least in this your day, the things that belong to your peace. But now, this is where hidden from your eyes. And this is why I always say, please listen, this is very important. This is why I always say to us, don't you ever say such a thing as what I have is what God can do. What you have is what your eyes can see. He said, if only you know the things that are meant for your peace. Sometimes, some things have been designed for your peace, but you just haven't come to the revelation of it. This is why we must pray some Pauline prayers. There are certain Pauline prayers that a believer must pray regularly. Oh God, the eyes of my understanding be enlightened, oh God. Just like we pray tonight. He said, if only saying, if thou you know, has known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now, this notice, it doesn't say the things that belong unto God. Mm. God had given them to you, they belong unto you. He said, the things that belong unto your peace, the word peace there is well being. Certain things that belong unto your well being. Jesus was weeping over his city. Hey, let me tell you something, city. In the agenda of God and the plan of God, you are not supposed to be here. In the plan of God, in the agenda of God, where we are concerned in heaven, according to the timetable of heaven, you have passed this place. According to the timetable, he, this is a city. So I can tell so I can go from scriptures to scriptures to tell you to tell you importance of cities in the agenda of God. Gee, not just individuals will be judged, cities will be judged. Jesus told us that. Cities will be judged. Because cities or environment, hold on, because there's something I want you to see here. Saying, if thou has known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. Notice, he said, but now, they are hid from your eyes. So when people say, you know, you know oh, I, me, all that I have is, is all that, there is no such thing. All, what you have now is what you can see. And I pray that you'll see much more. Yeah. Now, are you understanding what I'm saying? God, the dimension you're experiencing now, don't limit God to your experience. God is bigger than your experience. So what you are experiencing now is not the best of God's ability, but rather the best of what you have been able to see 
and what you have been able to believe God for. God can do much more. God can do much more. God can do much more. Yeah. God can do much more. In every area of your life, if you permit him. And he said, saying, if thou hast known that thou, at least in, the, in this day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Look at verse 43, everybody. I want all of us to read together as a family. Let's go. What does he say? For the day shall come upon thee. Uh-huh. Ah, see the way you're reading. That thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee. Uh-huh. And compass thee round about. And keep thee in on every side. Whatever is limiting you is broken in the name of Jesus. Notice what Jesus was saying. I want you to see. I want you to diagnose this problem correctly. He got to this city. He wept. He wept because the city's eyes were closed to certain things that belong to it. And Jesus Christ said, because you are not seeing some things, you should be, have left where you are. But because you are not living, and you have remained on one spot, when God, according to the agenda of heaven, has moved on. Remember what Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us. He makes all things beautiful in its time. No, not in God's time. I've shown you that scripture, right? KJ, KJV mis, um, interpreted that thing. NKJV and other translations corrected that error that KJV. So NKJV does not say he makes all things beautiful in God's time. Okay? Now, it's on the screen. I want all of you to read. Let's see. Want to go? Notice, it's not God's time. It's time. The time allotted unto that thing. Everything is carrying a divine timetable. It's time. Your life, your destiny is carrying a divine timetable. He maketh all things beautiful in its time. So therefore, he said, because you have not left where you are supposed to be and stayed longer where you shouldn't stay, he said, you will open the doors to the enemy. Then the enemy will come and edge you in on every side. What does that mean? Stagnation. When, when something, he said, he look at that. I said, and the day shall come upon thee when the enemy shall cast a trench. A trench is like a gutter, you know, around thee and compass thee round about and keep thee on every, on every side. Why? How did you get to that spot? You didn't leave when you should have left. There are, there are some things some of you are praying about now that you are seeking prayer for. You don't need prayer for. You should have left that dimension since. Daddy, pray, pray for me. When I sleep, something's pressing my neck. What's pressing your neck? At this stage, something should, should be pressing your neck. He not, did he not put his hand there? And I said, gee. But I couldn't pronounce the name fully. I said, yeah. Yeah. He did not press me. I said, ah, yeah. The Bible says, when the time when you should have been teachers, you are still a babe. You should have left that place. The enemy is digging trenches around you. That th you should have left where you are supposed to be. I move, I move forward. Say it better. Say it with me. I move forward. I move forward. Say I move, forward. I move forward. Do you know some things that you are praying about? It only takes maturity. Yeah. Do you know there are some habits? Some people are praying about, oh God, deliver me from this habit. God says, it is not a deliverance you need. It's maturity you need. Just mature above it. When the baby is peeing on their body, they mature out of it. That is why the Bible says, now that I'm old, I cast off childish things. It doesn't say God takes it away. I cast it off. I throw it away because I'm no longer there. When you should have passed the place and you're not passing the place, the enemy comes and digs trenches around you and keep you in so you can stay longer. Not me. Say with me, not me. not me. Now, this is the scriptures I'm showing you here. This is not, there's nothing. E even if I was not teaching, if you read it well and you allowed the Holy Spirit, you would have seen the same thing I'm trying to show you. For the day shall come upon thee that them enemies shall cast a trench upon thee. All right? Um, compass and keep thee on every side. Why? Look at verse 44. Everybody, let us read this together. Let's go, family. Let's go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why? Ooh, shatatata sakabuka baya. 
He said, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Because you didn't know the time of your visitation. That in the agenda, now, hold on, this was a city. Jesus Christ said, in the agenda of God, in the timetable of God, there was a time of your visitation. Because what is what, 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 what was it mean by time of visitation? The time, the appointed time for something. I've told you about Kronos and Kairos. Okay? Kronos is the time that is natural human time that we have control over. Kairos, you don't have control over Kairos. That is why on the matters of destiny, listen to me, you can't tell God I will do it when I'm ready. Kairos is not within your control. Is the appointed time of God allotted to issues of, uh, on earth. You can't say, when I'm ready, I will do it. No. You have missed a season. Don't say that. When you sense God is moving, jumping. It is disrespectful for you to think that God will hold time, you know, and everything under Kairos, just because you say you're not ready. You want to pursue personal agenda first before you do the will of God. Jesus wept over the city. Jesus cried. And I've said this before. Of course, some of you, you know what I say? Jesus wept, Jesus wept, Jesus wept. The truth is that people say, Jesus cried once in the Bible. No, Jesus cried twice actually in the Bible. Twice. Twice. Here and in that other place. In the book of John, I think 11, right? 11 to the 5. Let's see John 11 to the 5. I want all of us to read. What does he say? Of course, we say it's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Okay? So here, Jesus wept. Let's go back to that one. Everybody, let's go back. Hallelujah. Amen. He says what? And when he was what? Come near. He beheld the city. And what did he do? He wept what? Now, in John chapter 11, now listen, I've taught you before, when you see a word in the Bible, you need to know what Greek word or what Hebrew word did they use. It will shock you that the two times Jesus cried, it was not the same words that were used for him. And this is important for me, for you to understand the gravity of what happened to them. In John eleven thirty-five, 35, the Greek word that was used for cry is dakro. Dakro. Why? Because that crow is, that's when Lazarus died. And when Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus and everybody was crying, Jesus that crowed. The Greek word that crow means to weep silent, to shed tears. To shed tears. That crow. So this is what happened. Jesus got there and he saw everybody crying. And he was moved to his heart and like this. Where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? He's over there. That crow, Jesus that crowed. In Luke, <laughs> go back there, Luke 19, 41. The Greek word he used is not that crow, it's clio. When you study the Greek, and when they say somebody is clio, it means to cry out loudly and everybody here as though someone just actually like bereaved. Yeah. Like you are in serious. <laughs> many of us haven't seen people who actually cryoed. In fact, many of us have not cryoed. We have that crow. Especially now that you are older. The, 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 the older you get, the lesser you cryo. Because it's funny for an adult to be cryoing every now and then. Hong Kong, you daddy. Daddy. But when we are when we're younger, when they flog us, it's easy. You can you can baraja and cry. So many times we don't cry as it were in, in a certain way. Imagine God. Jesus got whatever, at, as, I mean, as powerful as he is, he got over his city and he began to cry. Oh. 
<laughs> you can imagine what the what, what, what the what the 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 the, 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 the disciples were thinking. Ah, you know, like like ah. You know the kind of cry that mucus are coming out of you. You you you, you are, <laughs> that is actually what you know um, cryo means. That's what Clio means. Hallelujah. Look at this. Everybody see. See Clio. What does it mean? Uh huh. To will aloud. <laughs> that was what was happening. Jesus got to a city. Why? Because they did not have understanding of the times that they were in. They did not have understanding of their season. Jesus said, oh, that you should have known the times and the season of your visitation. That this is not the normal time. This is not a plain time. This is not a time to just pursue career as usual. That as you are pursuing your career, you must make time to pray. Because destiny is calling you now. There is a trumpet in the realm of the spirit. And God is saying, hey, we don't have time to waste over you again. In the sense that, and then I'm praying for you. You know, I, I heard Rad Bonke say something very powerful. He said when he was to start ministry, he went to pray. And when he went to pray, he was there. I think it was age 19. Praying in a, in, 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 in a big church. And at 19 years old, he knelt down on the pew. And he said, God, I'm ready. Use me. Send me, Lord. Send me, oh Lord, send me. And right there, some pills after, is another man who was 90-something. And the man started apologizing and saying, Father, I'm sorry, I'm ready to go. Go where? At what age? Even if the mercy of God prevails, you don't have the time to do much again. At 90-something. He was apologizing. Please, Lord, I'm sorry. I should have obeyed you then. I should have done this then. Lord, please, please. And the Lord told him, I wanted you to hear the cry. That in your own age, get up and go to the nations for me. Thank God, Riyad Bonki was not there apologizing at 99. Look at how much impact Riyad Bonki made. I'm also one of the lives that was touched by that man's ministry. I have to tell you the truth. Evangelism by fire changed my life totally. It's, it's one of the reasons why CLC is so driven evangelist, evangelistically. Because I caught a book as a young believer that set me ablaze on evangelism. The nations of the world. Jesus was weeping. Why? Not because they didn't, get, they didn't have car. Not because they didn't build houses. He said, the time of your visitation was around. And you were busy doing every other thing as business as usual. Seasons will come in your life. And you have to be able to discern seasons. Discern timing. Not every time in your life is the same. Don't be a babe spiritually. Not every time in your life is the same. Only babies. Haven't you noticed for a baby, everything is playtime. <laughs> when you carry a baby, just like... <laughs> you notice... Not as adults, when we carry children, you, you, you must, children like it when an ad, when adult look foolish. That's the only time they laugh. <laughs> Notice we carry a ba baby and you are looking very serious. The baby won't laugh. You start making a fool of yourself. Carry the baby. The child. Tell the baby. And all that. For them, you just play, sleep, and suck. But you know what is unfortunate? So some of us at our old age. Our life is still the same way. You don't understand timing and seasons. What you should be doing per time. And what I mean is that even within your career, some of you, God is calling you to a higher dimension of your career, but you are not sensitive. You have remained on the same spot in your career because I just like this location. I just like this bank. I just like this job. God is saying, move, son, move. So comfortable. Jesus began to cry over them. He said, if only you knew the time of your visitation. If only you knew the time of your visitation. And I pray that, that supernaturally today, your sensitivity is heightened. Yeah. 
Say with me, my sensitivity is heightened. Save to every purpose. There is a time. Said the time allotted to purposes of my life. I come into knowledge. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Say with me, I come into knowledge. <clears throat> Say it better. Say, I come into knowledge. What will make God cry? We are not talking about Agba Lagba here. We are talking about God. God was weeping over a nation, over a city. Oh, city. <laughs> if only you knew the time of your peace. Of your visitation, what happened? And look at all of you still going up and down as if like nothing is happening to you. And sometimes when we are out of season, we don't even know. We are still enjoying the present. That's why sensitivity comes in. For you to know and say, ah, ah, no, no. Can I say this? Everybody give me attention. Listen to this. Some discomfort that you are having are not natural. Don't think that it's just sudden. So, I mean, some discomfort about this, your job. That you are having. Go, is, go and pray. Go and pray. I know, they, I know they pay you well. In this oil company or whatever. But pray. The cloud might have shifted over that place. When God was leading them. The cloud was going. Sometimes the cloud will stop. Sometimes you go. When the cloud is going. Don't stay back. You are still going to the promised land. Don't stay in the wilderness. You did not know the time of your visitation. And because you did not know the time of your visitation, God says, I'm concerned. I'm bothered. Not just bothered emotionally to the point where I will cry. In case you don't understand, let me explain. Give me attention. Jesus saw somebody without eyes. He didn't cry. No, not the fact, he was not blind. Though. The guy that Jesus took and then he had to use sand. To form eye socket and watch whatever. Listen, that guy, listen, he was not blind. There was no eyeball. He was born all the way like this. And Jesus, being God himself, the same way God took clay and formed us, Jesus put his hand inside mud and formed eyes for him. Jesus did not cry. A woman was bent over for 38 years. Jesus did not cry. Jairus' daughter died. Jesus did not cry. Several issues. He fasted for 40 days. Some of you, in two days, you start crying. Some of you, in two days, your eye will be red. So that is Lekon Shiosi. That is Lekon. Ah! For 40 days, Jesus did not cry. But he saw a city that was missing his season. Jesus wept. Maybe that will help you understand the validity and the strength of what it means when you're out of alignment and out of season in your life. Jesus said, if you don't, if you don't live where you're supposed to live on time to the next phase of your life, you allow and you permit the enemy to come and dig a trench around you. Amen. 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 Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Let's continue. And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another, because thou um, knowest not you know, the time of thy visitation. Continue. And this is what I want you to see. Go, where did he go after everybody? Where did he go after everybody? First of all, he stepped into a city, perused the city, looked over the city, began to cry. And after, he said all that he said. And you know what? Jesus Christ said, I'm going to the church. Why? <laughs> Why? Because the timekeeper for the city was the church. If the city was out of alignment, there's only one place where you should go, visit the temple. What were the pastors saying? When God's children are out of alignment, God is asking his pastors, 
Why are my children out of alignment? What have you guys been teaching? Notice, he got to the place. He first spoke about the city. After that, immediately, he entered the, city, the temple. Straight temple. Why? Because the temple is actually heaven's time keeper on earth. The church. To actually sound the beagle. To sound the trumpet and to scream the alarm. Hey! It's another season and another time. When Jesus was to come, it was the church that was actually sounding the alarm. The prophet kept saying, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's, they knew so much that the day Jesus came, people knew. Not just that, the day of dedication. They did not print and build. People showed up in church. Go and read it. Simon was there. Mary, they showed up. They say, why? We know that today is your baby dedication. Who invited you? We picked it in the spirit. We picked it in the spirit. Where is the child? The man looked and said, today my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. It's time for me to die. All these years I've labored praying for this moment when this child will come. Now this child is here. It's time to go home. He knew. They knew. Why? Because they were timekeepers in the house of God. And that is what the Bible also says. That the same way he came the first time and the body of Christ knew his second time. We will know. No. I said we will know. No. The final departure when Jesus is to come again a second time. The body of Christ will know. No, we will know. Yeah, the Bible tells us we will know. In Thessalonians. Many times people go like, you know, the coming of the Lord Jesus is as a thief in the night. And then, as a thief in the night, nobody will know. Get get your little love. <laughs> Whatever. Jesus Christ said, I mean, Paul was writing. Paul says, truly, he will come as a thief in the night. He said, but not so for us. He said, not so. So that means he comes as a thief in the night for them who are not of Christ, but not so for us. Not so for us. Media, find that scripture and put it on the screen. I want everybody to see. That's what he says. Not so for us. As a thief in the night for everybody, but not as a thief in the night for us. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Amen. So Jesus got there. Look at what he did. First of all, he knew that they had missed it. Listen to that. When he knew that the city had missed it, you know what Jesus Christ did? Palm. He said, I know where the problem is. Let's go to the church. Let's go to the temple. Let's go to the temple. When we get to the temple, we will know what is happening. When we get to the temple, we will know. We will know. And he went into the temple. And guess what, everybody? Guess what? Guess what? When he got to the temple, it was evident. Because the temple that was supposed to be the place where the time, spiritual timekeeper was being kept, they had forgotten about the assignment they were buying and selling. So let's go back now to verse 41. And I want you to read, you know, let's go to verse 41. Luke 19, 41. I want you to now read now. Because when you're reading God's word, you must see the consistency of thought. God is not confused. So there's a consistency of thought. That is what he's trying to achieve while he's explaining these things to us. So the Bible says, and he was, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and what? He wept. Continue everybody. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now, these things are hidden from your eyes. Everybody, let's read together. Let's go. For the day shall come upon you, uh -huh, that an enemy shall cast a trench about thee, uh-huh. Uh huh. In every side, let's continue. They shall lay the ground, uh huh, and the children within thee, uh huh, and they shall now live in thee, one stone upon another. Continue. Because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Continue. And he went into the temple, and what did he find there? Hold on now. <laughs> The issue was clear. Jesus Christ said, a city without a spiritual time clock, the church in that city is sleeping. 
So Jesus Christ says, let me go and find that. Maybe it's the city that is disobedient. Or say something wrong with the church. He got there and he saw what was happening in the churches. They, what they were doing, they were buying and selling. Inside the church. It has become the place of commerce. Everybody was just doing rishi rishi. Jesus must have, and so someone said, I see, eh, he drove them out and everything. Like, why wouldn't he? He just wept over a city that had no understanding of time and season. He knew what was responsible for it. That this thing you guys are doing is that you have become so carnal. Spiritual things have become so, and this is why I have serious issues. You know, when, the, when we as a house or let me, a, a church anywhere is not given to prayers, but given to activities. People will just be missing timetable over their life in that church regularly. Regularly. Because every other thing, and I will show you, please hold on. You will soon see. Jesus Christ looked and he went into the temple. Every time I teach like this, I don't just teach like this because you're a Christian. I know some of you have the call of God upon your life. A time will come, you step into your assignment. You will remember some of the things that God has called you to do. You are not there for fun and to play. You've got to pray. And he went into the temple and began to cast out. He began to cast out them that sold there and them that bought. Look at, he was casting them out. Get out! Get out! The church is not meant for this. Get out! No wonder this city is this cold. No wonder this, no wonder that. Because the place where People are supposed to be stepping. I mean, that is supposed to be ringing. Pa, pa, pa. The alarm of heaven is going off. Pa, 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 pa. The alarm of heaven is going off. The person that's saying, I say, hey, beloved, your time is up in that area. God is calling you to deeper things. But no, everybody was so carried away with commas. And believe me, you guys have heard me talk, teach on commas before. I believe in commas. Yeah, I believe in politics. I believe in all those things. I believe that we should be, it should be mentioned and all that. But we can never turn everything to commerce when people are no longer stepping into destiny. It's just about how much are you making? How much is the word of God working for you in your career? How much is the word of God working for you in your business? It's just career, business, buying and selling and all that. Only in that direction. I believe in it strongly. But it's a minute part of our assignment. But I want you to see the next verse, everybody. Let's look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Everybody, what, what does he say now? Uh huh. Uh huh. Hold on, folks. What were they supposed to be doing? But what were they doing? Come on. Pray. How was it that they missed their timing in that city? It started with the church became so cold, they lost prayers. The church lost prayers. When the church lost prayers, and I always say this, be careful of what is called um, new generation. We're in a new era. We're trying to whatever. Let me say this to you. There's no new era where God is concerned. In all these prayers, we have to whatever, we have, we have to, we have to, we have to. Listen to me. There is no such thing. If Jesus, the son of God, fasted and prayed, you will have to fast and pray in your life. You are a recipient of his grace. The receiver of grace cannot actually be more correct than the carrier of the grace. The Bible says, of his fullness have we all received. Grace for grace. So, we received of his fullness. The person who received of his fullness was fasting and praying. You, know? you, you have received of his fullness. You said, I said, God is no, long, no longer asking for prayer and fasting. God is no longer, and then you are there, shouting and screaming at very shallow things. I'm telling you, Christ has done everything. Hey, Christ has done everything. What? Christ did what he should do so you can do what you should do. Amen, somebody. Amen. Say with me, pray. pray. Say prayer. prayer. 
uh, saying unto them, Hallelujah, my house. What did Jesus say? The city, notice, I want you to see how everything happened. First of all, he was the city. When the city wasn't working well, Jesus knew something was responsible. He went to the church. When he got to the church, he found something there. He found the people. So all the things I've been teaching you during rivers and well, you can find everything here at once. The city, the temple, the people. The city lost the move of God, quote and unquote, because the church was not flowing in the move of God, the temple, because the people were not flowing in the move of God. If the people were flowing because there is no temple without the people. It is the people that makes the temple. So if the people were flowing in the move of God, the temple would have been so strong, the voice would have entered the city. And then the city would have been in time. The city would have been in time. What did they lose? Prayers! Listen to me, everybody. I've traveled. I still travel. She will travel. Don't let anybody come and make a mockery of your prayer life just because they feel like they're anywhere. You know, when you see those people write something that in Nigeria they'll just be praying, thing, praying, praying, praying for things government can, can, can provide. Who is praying for lights? So because they make a mockery of those things, some of you feel like prayer has become nonsense. Who has time to pray for Nepal? Who has time to pray for good road? Who, who, who is praying for God? Can government give me destiny? You are telling me I'm praying for what government can provide. Because maybe that is what you will have prayed for you in Nigeria. Don't, don't, don't count me as part of this kind of prayer points. Because some of you know, that's, that, that is how Twitter got your prayer life away. That all of you in Africa, you'll be praying about nonsense. Things that is because your government is not good. That's why your prayer life is so strong. You come to America, your prayer life, whatever. Or Benny. So that means, listen, the reason why your own prayer life has become so weak in London now is because all along, your prayer was about needs, not about destiny. So now that your needs are met, you don't have prayer life again. But if your prayer life, everybody, is about destiny, location or no location, your prayer life will be strong. When I travel, my prayer life doesn't go down. I'm still there in those places praying. I was on a trip to a country once, 10 days. Another five of those days was fasting. I was having all night back to back. And I was not hungry. I didn't have any need. Because I was not praying about needs. Our prayer life was to be on top of the game. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Our prayer life ought to be on top. Hallelujah. Prayer is about destiny. And that's what I want to do. That, that is what this, when I say I'm going to teach you on Wednesdays on prayers. I'm not just about to teach you about prayer of supplication and petition. We are stepping into some dimensions. Whether, whether you're a banker or you're a medical doctor. Whether you're a mother or you're a father. A husband or whatever. We are stepping into the timeline of God for our lives. I said we are stepping into the timetable of God for our lives. I said, we are stepping into the timetable of God for our lives. Come on now. I don't like how you're saying that. Say, we are stepping into the timetable of God for our lives. Say with me, our prayer life is not about what we eat or drink. No. I've told you, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What will happen thereafter? Yeah. When I say seek you for the kingdom of God, notice what I always say to you. You know, this is the kingdom of there's the kingdom of God in medicine that you're practicing. What is God's agenda for me as a medical doctor here? This med medicine is a platform for me. In that platform, I must fulfill purpose. Ah, uh, I don't know if there are esters here. Are, are there esters under the sound of my voice? Who you have entered the palace, but the palace is not the goal. The palace is a platform for the higher purpose of God. That's why I always say, we've made a mistake. What is what we do in the body of Christ? Once Esther enters the palace, you know what we do? We start calling Esther to come and give speech in church. 
Esther. You know, um, our sister here, the Lord is lifting her very well. You know, she, she's, she's number two woman. No? Please, come and tell us, you know, since you are fulfilling destiny. Please, what destiny, please? That she's number two in the kingdom. No, that's not destiny. That's platform. Don't confuse platform for destiny. Esther, come. Then we'll give her, you know, and everything. And then she will say, I just want to tell you that, you know, and then when she's coming, there will be two, 14 horses, three carriage, and then all the ladies in that place, all the young girls will say, I say, God, I want to fulfill destiny. I'm in the palace. That is where we made the mistake. We made the palace the destiny. We made our career our purpose. That is where the mistake came when we started teaching. So a doctor is a doctor for 40 years as a platform, but he never did God's will. Quote and unquote. It is like Peter. The fishing boat was not destiny. Jesus said, Peter, can I use your boat to preach? He gave him the boat, and from the boat, God could use his platform to do an assignment. So I don't know what God wants to do with your own platform. Because after a while, they called for Esther. They said, Esther, Esther, Esther. Esther came. Mordecai said, listen to me, beloved. You are here. For such a time, now they are telling you purpose. God gave you a platform so that a purpose can come out of it. And what is the purpose? You are going to enter the palace and deliver the Jews. And he said, hear me, Esther. Look into my eyes. If you refuse to show up for God, God will raise somebody else. I'm your... Pastor Demi said he's not his uncle, he's his cousin. But we, in the body of Christ, we all believe he's uncle. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, but so Mordecai said, I reached you. I helped you get into here. But don't confuse it. Huh? A time is going to come that we will need help. Now God is calling for help. Stand up now. Be a voice. Say, no, and not that, and everything. I say, ah, I'm not confused platform from purpose. I'm not confused from destiny. Some of you are bankers. God has a plan for you in that banking field, so you stay there. Some of you are in, what would it, in government. Stay in the government. On that platform, one day you will hear the Lord say to you, you are here for such a time as this. You are here for such a time as this. You are here for such a time as this. You are here for such a time as this. The church, the people were not praying, they were buying and selling. The church died spiritually because the people were actually spiritually asleep. The church was spiritually asleep. The city was spiritually asleep. The move of God was asleep in the entire three levels and three dimensions. And I pray for you. Any one of you that have been living or existing instead of living, there will be a supernatural wake-up call for you. Yeah. That there is more to your life than just existing. Yes, than just existing. I don't just want to grow old, have a beautiful house, have a few cars. My kids going to Ivy League universities, you know, Yale, you know, Oxford, Harvard, and then they give birth. I grow old and I die. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nothing. That's that's Solomon Grundy. There's no, there's no, there's no. Born on Monday. Uh, Christian on Tuesday, married on Wednesday, uh -huh, took it on whatever, died on whatever. That means that's no big deal, really. That life, that life, you don't need to be a Christian to live that life. Just whatever, marry, born, send kids to be school, big, beautiful houses, buy a few cars, grow old, die. Not to me. Say, not me. Say, there is more to my life. Say, I am not just in the palace. To ride big cars. That's not my destiny. That's my platform. I'm fulfilling destiny. 
Amen. Amen. So now let's come back. What was missing in the church that killed the people, killed the church, killed the city? My house will be called the house of prayers. Once prayer goes down, people begin to go spiritually down. The church knows dies. Eventually, the ecosystem or the environment, the city knows dies. My house should be called the house of prayer. Don't let anybody despise your prayer life. Don't. 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 Don't let anyone despise your prayer life. And don't give anybody the opportunity to despise it, even yourself, because of the content of your prayers. If the content of your prayer is always give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, God will say, look, there is more to life. I've had people ask me said some certain things in my life. Oh, pastor, how do you get this done? How do you get this done? Sincerely, look at me, look in this direction. Some of those things, I was not looking for them. They came to me. I wasn't looking for them. I was just pursuing God. And things that people were running after with ease just comes to me. I wasn't looking for those things. My profession, I'm an architect. I could have been studying my, my work. But for me, this is not true for every one of you. But for me, the Lord said, drop your work, carry your bag, and face the city of Eloni. But how did I know that? Prayers. I was in the season of prayers. I was on Fat Milan Bridge. I mean, going to a papa, and I heard clearly behind. I had to look back to check who was sitting down there. What are you doing there? The voice was so loud. What are you doing here? Ha! Huh? When I heard that, and it was time to pray, I went and started praying. And then the Lord God of heaven spoke to my heart clearly. Son, the season over your life in Lagos has shifted. The season over your career has shifted. It's a new day. Pack your bags and move to the city of Eloni. I have an assignment for you in that city. When you are not praying, you'll be missing timings. Do you know? It's 10 years plus now. It'll be, it'll be 11 years this December. I, 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 I know that I could still have been in Lagos. If I, if I did not understand timing. What was missing in the church, everybody? Yeah. Everybody now. What was missing in the church, everybody? Yeah. When prayer was missing, what happened to the people? Spirit, they, they started sleeping spiritually. What happened to the church? The church slept. What happened to the city? The city slept. Everybody missed timing because the church stopped praying. But I want you to see something very powerful here. Saying unto them, Oh, Zamakata. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes. No, seriously, let's pray. You know we pray. You know we pray. You know we pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Perhaps somebody's asleep spiritually. Perhaps somebody's asleep spiritually. I'm about to round off. Perhaps somebody's asleep spiritually. Maybe we can help. Let's pray in tongues. Let's pray in tongues. Come on now. See the way you're praying. See the way you are praying now. Come on, come on. See the way you are even praying. Father, I wake up. I don't live an ordinary life. I am not existing. I'm not just existing through life. Chasing one paycheck. Chasing salary. From one salary to the other paycheck. No, there is more to my life. There is more to my life. There is more to this platform. Lord, I have a fantastic platform. But what do you want to do with this platform, oh Lord? Can we pray? Can we pray? I sense God wants to do something here tonight. Let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray. 
I want you to pray, 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 pray. Father, anywhere where I've been confusing my platform for my destiny, where I've been confusing my, my, my boat, my fishing boat for my life journey, Father, help me to see better. Wherever you are, pray. I want you to pray some more. Online, here, present, pray. Jesus got over the city and began to weep over the city. He said, oh city, oh city. There is more for you in the agenda of God. Oh city, oh city. When he saw the city was down, he said to himself, let me go to the temple. The answer should be in the temple. When he got to the temple, he met the people. The people showed him the state of the temple. The temple showed him the state of the city. The people showed him the state of the temple. The temple showed him the state of the city. The people showed him the state of the temple. The temple showed him the state of the city. I really want you to pray wherever. Online, those of you joining online, those of you outside, wherever you are, pray. Father, I don't want to exist. I want to live a life that counts. I want to live a life that counts. I do not want to exist. I present my platform, which is my career before you. I present my platform, which is my position before you. Let your will be done upon it. Show me your will, Father. Let my ear hear. Let my ear hear. CLC, I'm telling you, I can sense there is deeper waters. And I mean it. I'm not trying to just teach something. But I can sense there is deeper waters. The Bible said in Ezekiel, and he showed me waters. He said, one water was to my ankle. And I could walk in it. He said, the water rose and it rose to my knees. He said, after a while, the water rose and it rose to my waist. And then he said, the water grew so much that I could swim in it. Every stage of your life is a level. Every stage of your life is a level. What level are you right now? Son, daughter, child of God, what level are you right now? Don't confuse ankle deep for waist deep. Don't confuse waist deep for a water big enough that I can swim within. You might have started your life at a level. But God says, son, daughter, I want to do something with your life. Those of you joining us from anywhere all over part of the world. Online, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Russia. United States, America, Canada, South Africa, Kenya, wherever. Father, why am I in this city? The end time is nearer than when we started. Why am I? What is my purpose here? What is my destiny here? Why am I here? Am I just in this nation because I escaped Nigeria to come to Australia? But I'm here as an emissary of God, as an ambassador of heaven. Am I in Ukraine? Because I know some of you are here joining us from there. Am I in Ukraine just to pursue an education? Or the agenda of God is upon my life. When the church is asleep, the people will be asleep. 
When the people are asleep, the church will be asleep. Eventually, the nation will be asleep. The cities will be asleep. The cities will be asleep. Let me give you two minutes more. I could have continued my message. But I don't want to. I want to give you an opportunity to pray. I want to give you an opportunity to pray. I want to give you an opportunity to pray. He wept over the city. He said, if only you know the times and the seasons. He said, you are missing out on a moment of visitation. You are missing out on a season moment of visitation. I didn't say ask God for money, for cars. Leave those ones. Let's pursue higher, higher things for now. You already have a job. What is God's wisdom? What, why are you working in that place? Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. You are already getting the salary. But why am I working in this company? Why did God tell me to start this company? That in the most mundane, in the most mundane areas of your life, you can still find God. In the most mundane area of your life, you can still find God. Why have you given me these children, oh God? Why do I have one girl and one boy? Why? Why was it this woman I married? Why was it this man? Father, there is a why to the what. There is a why to the what. There is a purpose to whatever I have right now. There is a why to the what. Bring your prayers to a close. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Be seated. Let's round off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Are you tired of praising him? Praise God. Now go back to our Luke 19 scripture. Go back to our Luke 19 scripture. Let the word of God be our final authority. The Bible is our final authority. That's what makes us Christians. We are not Christians just because we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are Christians because, most importantly, because we obey him. Say, destiny is calling. I don't even like how you're saying it. Say, destiny is calling. Ooh, glory to God. You see, there are three faces, stage of a Christian walk, of a child of God. The first face is sonship face. The second face is actually servanthood. The third face is kingship. The first face is sonship. The second face is servanthood. The third face is actually kingship. When you are just born again and you're a Christian, you are the sonship stage of your life. You will not die at the sonship stage. Amen. You will step into dominion. Amen. It's not as if when somebody dies, I mean, you, some of you, how many of you know this hymn? Um, mo, uh, must I die empty? Mo, must I go empty handed? God bless you for that hymn. And you remember, it was, I mean, it was a true life story that was converted to a hymn. This guy just gave his life to Christ. And after he became a Christian, um, he, was, he took ill. He was sick. And then um, the, the pastors came to the hospital. And then they were telling him. And they were saying, don't worry, don't worry. You are born again. You will make heaven. Everything, whatever. And he said, no, you guys are not understanding it's not about making heaven. I know I will. But must I go empty handed? Not having anything to show to my savior. Must I die empty like this? 
So the question is not about sonship. You are a son. When you give your life to Christ, the spirit of adoption has been given unto you. You are called the son of God. But after you have become a son, you move to the servanthood stage. What is the servanthood stage? Whereby now, the son is serving the purpose for his life. As you are serving the purpose for your life, it is in serving the purpose for your life that the kingship stands. The kingship rests on servanthood, not on sonship. Your dominion is in you pursuing destiny and fulfilling. Look at it. Let me give you an instance, everybody. So, Peter became Christian. I mean, I'm just using that now. All right? He started following Christ. He became born again as a child. But after a while, he started pursuing. You know, he moved from being a disciple, remember, a servant, to he became an apostle. Notice, the apostolic dimension of his life was not given to him just because he became a Christian. Mm -mm. But because he served the cause of Christ. But in serving, they moved him from disciples. It is disciples that became apostles. But not just apostles. The Bible tells us that in heaven, the name of the 12 disciples are written. Yeah. So, Peter moved from ordinary fisherman to disciple, to apostle, to an eternal name in heaven. To an eternal name in heaven. To an eternal name in heaven. We will not be small. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Say it better. Say we will not be small. Not be small. Say I'm moving, I'm moving. From just being a baby Christian. Be a baby. To becoming a son that serves. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. A true son serves his father. And it is in serving that they commit things to his hand. This one, they are just so committed, they are just so comfortable staying, staying and not doing anything. I know that I'm a born again Christian. I can't, it doesn't matter what I do. My name is written in the book of life. But that's baby theology. We all know that. But there is more. I said there is more. Oh, glory to Jesus. Amen. Look at that. You know, show them the Revelation scriptures. Go back there. I want you to read this. Revelation 21, 14. So you can see. Re read it together. You'll see now. Everybody, let's go. This is heaven now. This is the... And they're showing us things. Eh? It says what? The, the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Uh -huh. And in the name, in them, how what happened? Peter's name was there. From being, listen, listen, please. From being a fisherman to having an eternal name in heaven. What if the day they called him and said, follow me? And he said, follow fire. Follow, follow me. Who are you? I said, who are you? That I should follow you. I pray for you. That you will hear his call. Amen. In the area he wants you to serve. Amen. I say in the area he wants you to serve. Amen. Some of you, and the truth is not some of you, most of you, 90% of you are not called into preaching ministry. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Praise God. But you have an assignment in the place where God has called you to serve. That place, that platform. There is something there. But this is where I want you to see. Go back to our uh, look, our anchor scripture. We, are, we round up on that note now. And saying unto them, it is written, my house is the house of prayer. Remember again, what left the church? Prayer left the church. When prayer left the church, the people became asleep. The church slept. The city slept. Jesus wept over the city. Ah, oh city. After he finished weeping, he told himself, I know where the answer should be. Let's go to the temple. He got to the temple, he saw it. When he, he saw the people, the people showed him the state of the temple. The temple showed him the state of the city. And look at the next thing. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein. That's verse 45. And them that bought, saying unto them, uh -huh, everybody, let us, you have to read this part. Want to go? It is written. Uh huh. Now what follow after everybody? 
Let's stop there. And he taught daily in the temple. You know what he was saying? The church got to where it is because of certain teachings. I'm here to reteach. That's what Jesus was saying. So he drove everybody out. He said, give me the Bible now. Let me begin to teach you. So, if prayer is the core, and this is where I'm going to, prayer was what was missing. I've been now. I've been now. I've been now, everybody. I've been now, everybody. What did he say? He said, my house shall be called what? The house of prayer. My house shall be called what? The house of prayer. Come on, say it better. My house shall be called what? The house of prayer. Come on, guys. Let's say it together. My house shall be called what? The house of prayer. So, if my house should be called, shall be called the house of prayer, don't, 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 I don't want you to go psycho-spiritual on me, please. Don't, please don't go psycho-spiritual on me. If my house shall be called the house of prayer, huh? and they were not praying, what should, please be seated, what should you just start doing immediately? Huh? Thank you for not being psycho-spiritual. Man. You said my house will be called the house of prayer. After chasing everybody out, what should you start doing? I mean, call new people and let's start praying. Isn't that what he's supposed to do? Huh? Jesus chased them and started teaching. Jesus chased them and started teaching. Why? Why? You said it should be called the house of prayer. Okay, you've chased everybody. Then pray. Jesus Christ says a prayer called look on. Teaching look on. Because effective prayers must be taught. God bless you. Anybody can open their mouth to just utter things. But effective prayer must be taught. You see, everything I'm saying now is not something I brought out. You could see everything is there. I'm just explaining some of the things you've read over and over to you so you can see it better. In, 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 in whatever. Yeah. My house shall be called the house of prayer. And he, the Bible says, and he taught daily. Not, not whatever, daily. He taught daily. Why was he teaching daily? Because effective prayer must be taught. The problem many times is not that we are not praying. There is no want of a prayer mountain in Nigeria. There is no want of a prayer whatever. The issue is the content and how we ought to pray. So Jesus Christ says, I don't just want to gather everybody to just be saying anything. Everybody, come, 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 come. So people started lifting their voice. He said, Edro, sit down. Everybody sit down. He said, please give me the Bible. Let me teach. And then they are thinking that, but you, you just said the house shall be called the house of prayer. He said, I know. That's why I need to teach you. Because so that you will not be praying amiss. So let us actually teach and understand effectively. And this is why this season we are going to be teaching on prayers. We are going to be teaching on prayers. Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. What followed after is a teaching message. It's a teaching message. Let me show you one more scripture. Luke 11, 1. Luke 11 and verse 1. Luke 11, verse 1. Luke 11, 1. I want all of us to read together. Everybody, please let us read together. Family, let's go. Want to go? Uh huh. Who was praying now? I said, Who was praying now? Okay, let's continue. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hold on there. You are reading too fast. Where we were coming from when Jesus Christ said, My house shall be called the house of prayer, what did he start doing after? Huh? Teaching. Look at it here again. When the disciples came to meet him, they did not say, Lord, let us join you to pray. They said, what did they say? Teach us. Prayer is a teaching. 
first of all. Jesus began to teach. I've said this before. The Lord God of heaven standing with me here. I can't, and I'm saying, I mean, the one, if, if, if you've been around me for, for, for a while, you know. I don't have to say anything that I don't believe in. I can't remember what myself and her agreed and prayed about as a family that we don't have. Or that we don't get answers to. I can't. That we both say we're praying about this matter and all that. I can't. I don't have a catalog of unanswered prayers. I don't. I don't. And God is not a respecter of anybody. God is not. God is not. Some people taught me to pray. Effectively. And I'm grateful for them. Wherever they are, the Lord bless. Especially the Lord bless. Starting from Papa Hagin. The Lord bless the Hagin family forever. Amen. There is this massive book that Papa Hagin wrote. Prayer study. Uh, study course. Yeah, prayer. Is it prayer Bible study course? Prayer study course. I think prayer study course. Yes. Read those books. Answered prayers. I mean, several, whatever. Because, and I began to see areas where, oh, you could pray a miss like this. Oh, you could pray. Not just an emotional prayers. Not just emotional conversation. Jesus began to pray. Okay, that's the book. Thank you. The prayer study course. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the, the pray, prayer study course. Glory to Jesus. D.L. Moody, those men, just go and on that. Because I understand that if the Lord can make a praying man out of me, then I'm made. If the Lord can make a praying man out of me, being diligent in my work is not an issue. Naturally, I am. I'm, I, 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 I like to pray. But I understand that if God can make a praying man out of me, and I don't know who you are, woman. I don't know who you are, man. If the Lord can make a praying woman out of you. If the Lord can make a praying woman out of you. But notice what it did. He started to teach my house will be called the house of prayer. Then the next thing he did is, let me teach you what it is. Don't miss any Wednesday in this season. Don't miss any Sunday. This is not the month where it is a, it's a Wednesday service. I need to rest. No. Every service in this month is necessary for us. Every service is necessary for us. I consider it in my life that the greatest reward of labor over anybody that the Lord has actually sent to me, the greatest reward for me is that you did what God wants you to do. That at the end of your life, let me tell you what my greatest desire is. Listen to me, everybody. Is that when you are old and gray and when you die, upon your, 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 your epitaph or whatever they call that thing, what will be written there is here lies a woman who fulfills the will of God for her life. That is a greater title than anything you can have in your entire life. That's my greatest desire. Hell lies a man who did God's will for his life. Whether you're prof or not, those things don't matter. It matters only on earth. All your civilization is written. If you read the book of Proverbs, you will, that's what the Bible says, help us to number our days that we may apply our heart to wisdom. If you read the book of Proverbs, you will understand, I mean, sorry, Revelation. The Bible says all this civilization, everything, he said like a rag, it will be rolled away and burnt. Your skyscrapers, everything, he said they will roll it away like a rag and they will throw it out. That's the highest of civilization. That's what's going to happen already. It's not that we're thinking, God has told us the end of our civilization. So while we pursue all these things, like I always say to you, I like balance. I like you to enjoy life. I like you to have a good life in every area. But don't have all that and then not have destiny. Don't let it be in the midst of destiny. Here lies a man, old and gray, who fulfilled the call of God for his life. Tomorrow morning, what time everybody? 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Or mix it up. The 7. 
in this season, we're going to pray in prayer of consecration a lot. Yeah, consecration. Father, we are here. We are ready. Speak to us concerning our career. Speak to us about our businesses. Let your will be done here. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Please let me get this. Let's pray in tongues for a few minutes. I want you to hold the hand of somebody beside you and let us just pray in the spirit and say, Father, we are here. Usable entities. Usable entities. We thank you because we are at a crucial junction in destiny. We are at a crucial junction in destiny. We are here. Vessels of your glory. I don't know if you are praying. Please pray for the person beside you. I don't want you to pray for yourself right now. Please. Pray for the woman beside you. Pray for the man beside you. Father. This woman in my hand. I'm holding. Father, this is a vessel of your glory this is the vessel of your honor this is the vessel of your purpose a vessel is a container that carries something a vessel is a container that carries something can you be selfless and pray for your neighbor father this man here is the vessel in your hand this is not a prayer of feed me, clothes me. But rather a prayer of God, make me, make me, make me, make me, oh God. It's not a prayer of give me, give me. But rather a prayer of Lord, make me, make me, make me. Father, make her, oh God, make her. I'm telling you, you probably don't know the person you are holding. No, we no man after the flesh. No, we no woman after the flesh. You might go like, is it not Mrs. So-and-so? Is it not Mr. So-and-so? No. You don't know God's plan for their lives. You don't know God's purpose for their lives. That is why I want you to pray. Some of them might not know the details, so maybe they are not praying the way they should pray. I want you to intercede today. The man you are holding might not know. So maybe the man does not even know how to pray as he should. Can you please pray for her? Pray for him. Please pray for that man. Say, Lord, I pray for this man. Some years ago, I was smoking India hemp. I was in occultism. I was in court. Who would have known that one day God has a plan, an agenda for me to preach the gospel. But some people prayed for me. Some men stood up to pray for me. And said, Father, that we were boy will not go to hell. The Lord answered their prayers. I'm here today preaching the gospel. Please pray for that woman. Pray for that man. You are watching me online. From wherever you are watching, from all over the world, pray, pray. If your child is there, pray for your child. If your husband is there, pray for your husband. Those of you online, pray, pray. We are a praying people. And we are a word people. We don't have to lose any of the two. We can be word and spirit people. Can you please pray? Just one minute to go. One minute to go. One minute to go. One minute to go, please. Please pray. Father, I pray for this man. 
This is a vessel of your glory. This is a vessel of your honor. Do with him whatever you please, O oh God. Do with her whatever you please, O oh God. That when everything is said and done, when we are old and gray, we will be able to say, when the roll call is called and it's time for us to go home, when we have done that which we have come to this earth to do, and it's time to die and go home, it will be said, here lies the woman who fulfilled the will of God. Here lies the man who fulfilled the will of God for his life. Please pray some more.